Good afternoon. Uh, like I've already said, my title of my discussion is a clinical trial of uh, antiretroviral effects of uh, the medicinal synthetic aluminum and silicate. Uh, antiviral therapies for HIV AIDS should be made of uh, antiviral agents that act by physical effects. This is because uh, HIV AIDS is a, a chronic disease that requires prolonged medication. So if uh, uh, agents that uh, act by, by chemical effects are used as th for treatment, uh, they may have some effects on normal cells over a long period they may become toxic to the uh, individual being treated. And of course, we know viral biochemistry change, so that uh, viruses uh, were able to develop uh, research against uh, antiviral therapies. But if we do, if we get uh, uh, agents that uh, act by a uh, physical effect, it will be more difficult for HIV to develop uh, research against that uh, therapy. Uh, then uh, our review, that, uh, our topic is that is a uh, medicinal resistance calibrium silicate. Is it a, an antiviral agent? Uh, of course, it's already existing medication. It's being used as antiviral, anti, uh, antidiarrheic agent. It's also used in uh, different uh, formulations of uh, medicines. But uh, we now want to try it as an uh, antiviral uh, agent. What qualifies as antiviral uh, agent? Uh, we know that uh, literature says that. Uh, uh, the, the, the aluminum silicate, uh, the molecules, uh, the, what makes the molecules, the platelets that make the molecules, uh, have uh, negative charges on their surfaces and uh, positive charges on their edges. And every virus is uh, electrically charged. Some are negatively charged. HIV, which we are talking about, is positively charged uh, virus. And every uh, infected cells are also so to be charge, there's abnormal cells, which is infected cells and uh, cancer cells, also have negative uh, electrical charges. And of course, you know that two positive charges will attra attract each other. And uh, platelets of the AMOS molecule are only 0 0.96 nanometers uh, thick, which, is, which means that they are made of nanoparticles. And of course, nanoparticles will be able to cross physiological barriers and therefore will be able to reach uh, HIV and uh, HIV infected cells in any part of the body. And of course, uh, uh, traditionally, the magnesium uh, aluminum silicate, aluminum aluminum silicate is used uh, in medicines to help disintegrate capsules, which means that they can also disintegrate uh, infected cells if they attack to infected cells. But if uh, infected cells are destroyed, the HIV hidden in cells, then we talk about HIV hiding in cells, will be exposed. And if they are exposed and they are absorbed out, uh, that means that uh, the uh, viral particles uh, will not be able to uh, develop their own uh, foci of infection. And of course, uh, aluminum is uh, used as stabilizing agent to stabilize chemical therapeutics. And by stability, it means to prolong uh, bioavailability. And if bioavailability is prolonged, uh, uh, medicines uh, work uh, better. And that means that uh, if that is used in the treatment of viral infections, secondary infections will be better treated than uh, normally treated now. Uh, in summary, review of the medicine, uh, the aluminum medicine kit, it is safe for use as medicine. It's able to reach uh, and destroy infected cells anywhere in the body. And it uh, inhibits viruses by physical effect, not a biological effect, which means that it's going to be safe to cells, and it's also going to be last long before the virus will be able to develop a result against it. It potentiates, it potentiates uh, antimicrobials against secondary infections, making the uh, management of uh, second infection is uh, better. Then why are we talking about medicinal synthetic aluminum silicates? Whereas our review was aluminum aluminum silicates. Uh, the aluminum silicate naturally contains uh, impurities for which uh, the, uh, use is, uh, the its use is limited. Before it is used, it is used a process to make it uh, purer. Alternatively, you have to think of a uh, synthetic uh, form. In Nigeria, where we work, uh, there's no deposits of aluminum silicate, but we have in abundance deposits of aluminum silicate and uh, deposits of uh, magnesium silicate. So we felt it is better to synthesize than try to purify what we do not uh, have. So aluminum silicate and uh, magnesium silicate, we are reacted 
to get uh, the synthetic aluminum and that's the uh, equation for the synthesis. Then, since what we reviewed is a uh, aluminum magnesium and what we have is a uh, medicinal synthetic aluminum magnesium there's need for us to assess it again to know if it's going to work as we have already reviewed. So we checked it uh, uh, as antiviral agent, both in vitro and in vivo, and uh, we checked it as adjuvant if it's able to potentiate antimicrobials, and we checked it for safety. And from the results we got, we concluded that. Uh, uh, it is an uh, antiviral agent, both in vitro and in vivo, and it is a uh, uh, staplasin agent for antimicrobials, and it is safe. Therefore, it equals uh, an antiviral uh, therapy, can be used as antiviral therapy. Uh, test of uh, antiretroviral, antiretroviral effect of the medicinal synthetic aluminum silicate uh, was also done in vitro and uh, before this uh, clear cut trial. For the in vitro test of uh, the medicinal synthetic aluminum silicate as an antiretroviral agent, what we did was to collect a plasma positive, a HIV positive plasma from a hospitals, and then we treated the plasma with a, the medicinal synthetic aluminum silicate, where for each plasma we had three portions. One portion was a control, one was treated once with the medicinal synthetic aluminum silicate, then the, second, the third portion was treated two times. Then we tested the supernatans, for viral data and compare their means to know if uh, they qualify as an antiretroviral uh, medicine. From the results we got, we encouraged to move over to clinical trial. For the clinical trial, we made the uh, formulations of uh, the medicinal synthetic aluminum silicate and apicillin trihydrate, which we call antivirate A. We also made uh, a formulation of the medicinal synthetic aluminum silicate alone, which we call antivirate uh, B. Then we used journal publications which reported that uh, aluminum silicate is safe for use as medicine, and those who have published uh, with our medicinal synthetic aluminum silicate to cancel HIV AIDS patients and their uh, physicians. Those who accepted to, for the clinical trial were made to apply through their physician for the clinical trial. Each patient had his or her plasma tested for HIV viral load uh, before commencement of the treatment. Uh, they were then treated uh, for four weeks with a 50 mg per kg of the medicinal synthetic aluminum silicate, 7.5 mg per kg of uh, ampicillin trihydrate, and uh, with immune stimulants. Thereafter, the treatment was reduced to 50 mg per kg of the medicinal synthetic aluminum silicate and immune stimulants alone. Viral was repeated several times during the test, during the clinical trial. For when viral load of a patient reduced below 50 per mil, the treatment was continued for additional four weeks and then stopped. From the result, you can see the in vitro test, HIV data of one of the patients uh, increased from 32 to over 1496 when the incubation was done only once. But when the treatment with uh, the medicinal technology was repeated, it reduced from uh, over 1496 to 32. And uh, of course, uh, for the mean, the mean also increased from 4 to 14. And then when the treatment was done two times, it reduced from 14 to 6.5. The most important information here is that we find the difference between 4 and 14 significant. And between 14 and 6.5 uh, significant, which means that uh, medicine has effect uh, against HIV in vitro. Then uh, for the in vitro test, we have the same pattern from a, a mean of uh, 498.5 uh, viral load, it increased instead of reducing to 1072.5 when the, the patients were treated for 3.75 uh, weeks. But when the, treatment, uh, when the treatment duration was increased to, uh, to 6.67 weeks, the viral load reduced to 407.33, and this was significant. Then uh, when we uh, continue the treatment, the treatment duration further to 10.4 weeks, the viral load also reduced from 19,500 copies of RNA per meal to only 270 per meal. And that, uh, that gave us a uh, 
98.6% reduction in viral uh, load. That's the, the table. <coughs> we therefore conclude as follows. This, the initial increases which we observed both in vitro and in vivo, we interpret it to mean that uh, the uh, uh, medicinal synthetic aluminum was able to destroy HIV infected cells, thereby unmasking those hidden HIV. Therefore, that is why the test was able to capture them, in, uh, causing the rise in tighter in vitro and the viral load in vivo. Viral load uh, reduction of 98.6% uh, got after treatment of uh, treatment for 10.4 uh, uh, weeks was significantly higher than 18.28, which we got uh, when we treated for only 6.67 uh, uh, weeks, suggesting that the longer the duration of treatment, the more the copies of RNA that will be, I mean, the copies of uh, HIV that will be uh, flushed out. Those of viral load below 50, of course, we know from literature that any medication that can reduce viral load below 50 is regarded as a highly active antiviral uh, therapy. But we know that uh, that is combination of virus, uh, of medicines. But here now we are using only one single medicine to knock down the viral load below 50. Uh, in summary, therefore, we now observe that uh, the, our medicinal system was able to unmask the so-called hidden uh, HIV. And it, because it acts on viruses, both in blood and the, you know, in the organs, as we, are, we find in literature review, it has access to every organ and every system because they are made of nanoparticles. And it most, it's more prone of uh, uh, HIV. It's a continuous hunting. That is to say, the longer you treat, the more HIV you, uh, you flush out. To achieve cure of HIV, we think all that we require is for cause the medication to last for long, uh, long, long enough. We treated for four weeks uh, after the viral has come down to uh, 50 or below 50. Somebody can decide to treat for a longer period, but if you continue the treatment for as long as the medicine continues to knock down, we are likely going to come to a situation where there will be no more HIV hidden anywhere. The patients, we also observe that the patients that, uh, whose viral load reduced to 40 and 44, and who we are treated for additional uh, four weeks, have remained healthy without antiretroviral medication. One person has remained uh, healthy for 16 months, the other person for uh, 10 months. But uh, what remains is that we have not been able to say we have confirmed their HIV status to be negative, because in Nigeria, HIV status is determined by antibody tests, not uh, antigen uh, tests. And we know that antibodies can last long, even when the virus, uh, the, uh, the infection may have uh, been knocked out. So we are waiting for when, when we will start using antigen tests to determine HIV status. That is why we are leaving the world with this big question. Can we say we have achieved a cure for HIV? Or if we have not, what can we do to achieve that cure? Thank you very much.